Welcome, one and all, to the mystical world of Felbar. Adventures abound throughout this realm, and we appreciate the opportunity to regale you with some stories from these trails. These accounts are all based on actual RPG experiences that occurred within Adventures in Felbar. Some of these tales may be for mature audiences, while others may be for very immature audiences. We now present the sage Mikas Tumo from Tamel, also known as as the Bard of Felbar. Welcome to Session Denali 19. Last episode ended with the party crossing the Inlet Bay to seek out a mysterious noble in the Northern Lands. While the group was split for the reasons, all agreed that they would stick together despite some questionable behavior by Grish, the Zenobian cleric. We begin with the group in a small rowboat headed towards shore. Stroke! 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 chanted Phidias the Gnome as he sat facing Sir Omel and Grish. The cleric lifted his oar out of the water and the knight quickly followed to avoid going in a circle. Leaning in, the large Zenobian went nose to nose with a diminutive rogue. I am not telling you again. Knock it off or this oar may fly out of my hand and strike you in a delicate place. The Gnome gave a small smile and softly whispered, stroke, causing the cleric to begin to throttle him. As the boat began to tip wildly, Sir Omel and Yolanda Two Blades intervened, causing even more motion and allowing water into the side of the vessel. Stop it, yelled Harris the mage. You jackasses are about to send us into the water, and I for one don't want to get wet. My spell components work better dry. The foursome pulled back from each other, straightening their clothes and armor and the two large men resumed pulling the oars and the boat moved slowly forward. Brother Stance looked towards the back of the boat and attempted to assuage everybody. None of us got much sleep last night and with the rough waters were all a bit edgy. If everyone could just relax and try and make the best of it, we'll all get better sleep tonight on solid ground. Phidias and Grish continued to glare at each other as the large man pulled the oar back and forth slowly. We're nearly there, exclaimed Harris at the front of the boat. Grish pulled the oar again, never breaking eye contact with the troublesome rogue, but as Phidias mouthed the words, stroke, it was all he could take. The enormous cleric dropped the oar and raised up to punch him when the boat hit the beach, causing Grish to fly out through the air and into the sandy beach. This knocked both the mage and the monk into the sand as well. Uproarious laughter escaped Phidias's mouth as Sir Omel shook his head. As the threesome got up off the beach, a group of men in farming attire approached. Can we help you folks with something? The cleric wiped the sand away and introduced himself to the men. They began to ascertain the lay of the land and the leader of the group began to point out several features of the Northlands. Grish did not notice the man fumbling under his robes, reaching for a hidden dagger. As the cleric looked to one side, a dagger whizzed past his face and struck the farmer in the head, sending him to the ground. As Grish turned, he saw Phidias' arm still extended and noticed Sir Omel, Knight of Bacchus, and Yolanda Two Blades jumping out of the boat. The other farmers had tossed aside their cloaks, exposing armor and each sporting long swords. Brother Stance engaged two until Yolanda tackled one to the ground. Harris the mage was slashed across the arm as he attempted to cast a spell which fizzled at the interruption. The cleric recovered quickly and engaged the man who had injured Harris just as the knight of Bacchus waded ashore to take on the remaining two. Melee continued with Yolanda beating one man with the palm of her short sword and brother Stance wheel kicking his assailant. Grish was able to push Harris back but caused him to fall backwards into the water. Blades rang off Sir Omel as he countered strikes with the pair on him. Phidias snuck under the blade attacks and sliced the hamstring of one of the knight's opponents, causing that man to lose balance and fall. Sir Omel finished off the injured man with a blade through the heart, but was himself struck by the other assailant. The monk then landed a flurry of blows, ending with a loud snap his opponent crumbled with a broken neck, landing next to Yolanda's unconscious foe. Grish crushed, crushed his opponent with a well-placed strike to the skull, killing him instantly. 
Sir Omel ordered the last foe to surrender, but was blinded when the man kicked sand into his face before attempting to move towards some horses. A loud twang was heard, and the man crumpled under a bolt sticking out of his back. The group turned to see Phidias admiring a small hand crossbow. Where did you get that? asked Brother Stance. The rogue pointed to the man with the sliced leg and said, I didn't think he'd need it anymore. These guys sure went down quickly, though. Grish and Yolanda examined the victim of the crossbow bolt while Brother Stance kept watch over the unconscious prisoner. After pulling forth the small missile, they noticed a viscous fluid along the shaft. What do you think? asked the cleric. Yolanda lightly tapped the fluid, briefly tasting it before spitting it out and rubbing her tongue. Yeah, it's poison. Everyone watch out. These weapons may have poison on them, she yelled. Harris and Sir Omel quickly patted their own injuries, but finding only blood, noted that they appeared to be okay and only slightly injured. As Phidias began to go through the pockets, the mage and knight checked the blades of their attackers, noticing no i on them. After binding the comatose man with rope, the monk assisted with checking the bodies of anything of note. Checking the horizon, Grish spotted something behind a row of fishing huts. Hey everyone, over here, he yelled as he moved towards the buildings. Redrawing her blades, Yolanda followed, scanning for additional problems along the way, and a running Phidias quickly caught up to them. What is it? he asked, but as he turned the corner, he spotted what Grish had already discovered. Yelling over the trio, Sir Omel gripped his blade tightly, but was waved off by Yolanda as she resheathed her own weapons. Dead fisherman. A moan escaped the lips of the bound prisoner, and Stance looked up at the burly knight and remarked, He's in pretty bad shape. Good, was the quick retort from the knight. If he and his buddies killed a bunch of innocent fishermen, I have little time for them. Well, that's not very paladin-ish, is it? questioned the monk. In our order, you don't hurt innocent people, Brother Stans. Some orders are too rigid. The order of Bacchus is more... Well, we're more practical in our outlook. Well, what are we going to do to them? Kill them? asked Stans. Omel pondered for a moment before responding. No, we'll see what he can tell us, and then throw him in chains aboard the ship. We'll let the Denali decide this man's fate. We close out this episode now, and give you our thanks for listening. Please subscribe to this podcast, and don't forget to follow us on Twitter, at The Bards Podcast. For everyone in Adventures of Philbar, thanks for listening.